Hello, thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you're enjoying. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I painted my van side for Necromunda. So I've started the gang off the same as I've done all my Necromunda models so far, which is a black spray, then with a lead belcher spray over the top. Now, I really like starting off from metallics, especially for the sci-fi futuristic um, models. Very time-saving, there's a lot of metal that you're going to leave. Uh, but also in this case, I'm starting off with some contrast paints. And I find contrast paints work quite well over that metallic surface. So you need to put contrast over a light surface, so if you weren't starting from metal, you'd have to start from a pale, you know, sort of off-white colour, which would then give you a lot of work later on, so um, metal's good for both ways. So what I've done first is the Major's Purple, like I've said, legs, arms, head, you know, all the body parts, that kind of thing, leaving the guns and that top knot um, that comes off them plain to do the next stage. Doing a shade of Nuln Oil across the gun. And on any of the models that I've put like a bit of equipment on the waist that's metallic, you put it on there as well. So all the paints I've used, I'll put in the description down below so you can follow it exactly if you want. If not, you can just take some inspiration, um, maybe match it or, or whatever. You can do your own thing. So after the Null Oil wash over the weaponry, I've then mixed up my own kind of glaze there using a, a bright green colour and some glaze medium. Uh, but you don't have to use the glaze medium. It is a bit time saving. But 50-50 water to paint mix generally works quite, you know, as well. And you can just paint that over. What we're looking for is it to sink into the um, cracks and crevices of the model and, and just leave a sort of thin highlight across the top so we're not wanting just to paint it on. Now, for me, contrast paint is a starter point. Uh, I did try at one point painting with contrast and highlighting straight off it. And look, it works. That's kind of what it's for. But it definitely works better if you treat it as a start point and I think then put some paints on top. So... What I've used here is a royal purple. This is a Vallejo paint, so I'm mixing GW and Vallejo here, but works really well, and the colour's slightly darker than what you've already done, and I think matches off quite well, but there are obviously Games Workshop paints that you can use. I'm doing this on the armour panels, so the chest, the arms, you know, the legs, the thighs, that kind of stuff, because this is a bodysuit that they wear to keep them alive. You know, they're all irradiated from their technology, that kind of thing, but it's also that armour that's on top. So starting off there with a darker colour on the armour panels and then dropping down into where that wash will be that you've used from the contrast paint into the bodysuit. So I think it looks, it looks quite nice and uh, I think it's important to put paint on top of the contrast and not just rely on the contrast to do the job entirely. Now, for those of you who have watched some of my videos, you'll see the last video I did did a lack. I did a totally different camera angle. Um, I've not gone back to the old camera angle. This video was actually filmed way before those ones. And if you've followed my Instagram, you'll see that this was done before I did the Escher. But then I've painted the Escher next and was going to publish this first. But then the new start set came out and had the Escher in. So I thought, oh, I'll publish that. So we're getting back around to this. But if you do happen to prefer this camera angle, compared to the one that was in the Delac video. Um, drop some comments below, tell me which you prefer, or if you don't, if you don't care, well, tell me that as well. Um, but hopefully you'll enjoy the videos anyway, regardless camera angle. Uh, but I am trying to improve all the time, still fairly new into this game of doing these videos. So anything you do tell me, any hints and tips, or even if you tell me what you'd like me to do next, it is always appreciated. So now moving on to some of the details. So we're doing uh, the skin and the hair here. I'm just using an, a pale brown for the hair. Now. I'm keeping the hair colour across this gang fairly consistent because my vision for my Vansar is high tech, almost like a little military unit. That's why they're all carrying las guns, all the basic um, gangers are just all las guns. I want to look like a sort of drilled military unit in the high tech gear going out into the underhive. That's kind of my vision, slightly insectoid carapace kind of armour, that kind of thing, looking a bit alien and otherworldly in this dank underhive. So I've kept it. Only a few with the heads bare, and I'm going for quite pale um, hair colour. So we've done that, and then we've used the pale flesh on the skin, and now we're adding some detail onto the weaponry. So using the black to paint the butt stocks and just the flash hiders or the end of the muzzles, whatever you want to call them, uh, on the guns. You don't have to do that on the weaponry, but I wanted to make them look a little bit more well cared for than you might have had elsewhere. Now that so far, that is the basic colour scheme for the gang. Um, the rest of the gang is, is not really having much more paint put onto it. But on your characters and champions, you will always put um, a bit more equipment. So on your unit leader here, I'm showing you, we put some pouches onto his chest, that type of thing. So going into a dark brown colour here, because I think that looks slightly luxurious. Uh, but, you know, in the underhive, having a leather pouch is, but obviously slightly rarer than using a canvas in a, a green one, so I've gone for that. One thing to pick out as well for me is the standing on some ammo 
crate with some shells in there. But I've just gone for red shells. You could differentiate your, your unit champion and your unit leader, your gang leader, um, by doing different coloured shells, but I've just done them the same red, so useful to pick out. A bit of yellow on the scanner that we've glued onto his leg there, just to add some detail. And obviously the biggest thing he's carrying is his shield. Now, you can leave these see-through plastic. I haven't, because I personally feel that when you do that, one, it's a nightmare to not get glue on it and make it haze up. But secondly, I think it obviously stands out as a model. So I've chosen to undercoat it. And I'm just using two blues, you can see there. I've used a dark blue across it. And I've done a little bit of wet blending together, which I'm not showing on here. I've seen that in other videos, if you want to check those out, about how to sort of blend that in together with the, the two blues on the shield. Now, this is the part where I'm going to try and tie all the gangs together. Again, if you watch my other videos, all my Necrom on the gang are on um, scenic bases that I've made with a green stuff wheel roll and not use the standard bases. And on every painting scheme, no matter what I've done, I paint the bases exactly the same. So the spray metal, and then I might pick out some yellow details and things, but I always use that Vallejo sepia wash that you can see there. Gives it a dirty um, effect. And now I'm starting to do the washes. Uh, I start using the Games Workshop sepia there and change my mind and rub it off because there's nothing I want to use it on this model. But what I'm using is the right Clum flesh shade, like a flesh wash color. Slightly pinky tones to put onto the skin, to put a bit of vibrancy in the skin. Because although we're going for pale, we're trying to make it come up. I have used previously the sort of um, sepia shade kind of washes, whether it's a workshop one or the Vallejo one, but I want to keep these clean on the skin because, you know, military unit, clean precision. I have used the Games Workshop sepia shade on the hair and things on the other models, and I've used the Vallejo one on the base because that's a dirtier one. So even though it says sepia shade and it says seraphim sepia, you know, from two different manufacturers, they do give two different effects. So just play an experiment and see what paints you prefer to use for, for what models. And that's something I always recommend. Keep playing. Now back to the Null Oil. And I'm putting this onto the areas we've painted black. And also I'm putting it back over the section of the gun where we painted the gun casing with that royal purple when we did the armour on the model. So we did the model armour and we did the gun casings in purple as well. I'm going back over with very lightly with that null oil um, to kind of put it back to looking more metallic again. And then even though I've done the same colours on the body and the gun, they will look totally different because we've put another layer on there. We're not putting another layer onto the body. We're leaving that as is, so change the tones. I've put a layer of null oil onto the top knot as well, just to bring it, make it look more metallic and, and insectoid. Okay, now, because we've done the flesh shade on the skin and we've put the, um, seraphim sepia onto the hair we're going back over that very lightly um almost edge highlighting onto the hair very delicately not much paint on the brush putting the paint in the sections where the light's going to hit to bring that back up and on the skin very very thin layers again putting it just on to where the sunlight's going to hit so the brow ridge the nose the tops of the ears that kind of thing we're not painting every section we're going for probably 50 percent of the model on the first pass 50 percent of the skin very very thin layers this has been on the wet palette for i think two nights at this point so it's very very watery on there just going on very delicately end of a small brush building up that skin until we're happy and what you can also pick up as well is you can pick up some of the red that's on there because i've done some red shells and very gently put a little bit onto the lip if you want to do that and just keep playing but thin layers now in the final stages i've got two different metallics on here and what i'm doing just to make them look a little bit under hive. I want them clean, but I want them to still look a little bit under hive. Is take that metal and just do some very gentle edge highlighting on the very raised edges of the armor panels to make it look like sort of battle damage. But highlighting with that silver makes it look a little bit dirty. And we've done that on the armor, pa armor panels that are purple and on the gun casings. And that's the paint scheme. So you can see the leader there, quite insectoid looking, but quite clean. Still very, you know, under hive if that's a if that's a word. I think it makes a consistent gang. I have varnished these as well. I always do that for models I'm going to play with. Um, but I think the gang ties in nicely. It looks very different to the gangs that I've painted. It gives a real nice insectoid effect that's clean, um, that looks like a unified you know, squad um, going into battle with the, the sort of higher technology the Vansar has. So look, I hope you like that paint scheme. Hope it was um, semi-inspirational or useful. If you liked it, drop a like and comment down below. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for watching.